Um, and we are live right now. I'm Scott. I'm Bart. Uh, Scotch Test Dummies. Hopefully everybody knows that and is tuning in. It's our channel. The Dummies. Uh, joining us today from Wisconsin. Go ahead and introduce yourself, guys. Hey, guys. We are Simple Diversion. And my name is Graham. My name is Rob. And we are happy to be here yes. with the Scotch Test Dummies. Boom. Welcome. And we tried uh, we tried hooking up and uh, for a while. And you guys have been, well, you guys, us, a few conflicts here and there. And uh, yeah. we finally, finally did it. I think one of you finally was like, hey, we need to do this because you were like, when are we doing it? When are we <laughs> doing it? This Sunday. Make, let's do it. Make it yeah, and with two toddlers, it's gotten pretty hectic yeah, with the schedule. So busy. we needed about three weeks just to even plan it. <laughs> yeah. now, see, you you could have been calling us toddlers. That's how I've been. <laughs> <laughs> we are the toddlers. Would you agree? Ooh, almost knocked it over. Yeah. I would never dare. Uh, no, we're <laughs> Maybe toddlers. <part>. <laughs> I've been known to toddle. Sorry. <laughs> we're going black first. Well, I'm going to point so out we, uh, we before redoing? we well before we even get started, oh. a, a comment here real quick. Haas yeah. Formula One fan points out European. We're at fifty nine ninety nine subs. We need one more sub to hit six thousand. So anybody that's watching, if you're not <laughs> sub, make sure you sub to us. Make us hit that six thousand. Boom! Probably we'll just we'll, happened. We're, we'll watch and see here as the show goes. If we hit <laughs> hold 6, on, whoa, we lost twelve. What happened there? <laughs> we pissed some people off. They're We've got about five thousand more to go to hit six thousand. So, <laughs> oh, you're but, good. It means all right. nothing. It means nothing. So, uh, when we sat down, we looked at you know um, what have we done? What do we have? What does Simple Diversion have? Uh, they've done one or two Johnny Walkers uh, recently. Who doesn't have Johnny Walker on their bar? At sure. least one of the expressions, right? Um, and I think red is everybody's favorite, right? Which you haven't even opened. You love it so much. You've <laughs> left. You must have like a case of these. That's right. You must love yeah. it. <laughs> what are we gonna do, Bart? We're gonna test them. Test them. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> that was a good one. So we're opening up the red first, huh? Yeah, when I figured, is that what we talked? Yeah, red, right? Yeah, I already got my glass. Yeah. Oh, you already got it ready. All right. I could use a little bit more. Oh, Lord. Oh. I, I spilled two drops. I'm in Right over the here. computer. Here we go. Oh, that's, that's dangerous. dangerous. All yeah. right. What kind of drop? Now, uh, I did start Johnny Walker Black, got me started in scotch. Yes. Um, I did switch to red for a while. Early on, go back to 2008, 2009, red was quite a bit cheaper. Sure. Um, yeah. But then once I switched to, uh, you know, Glenn Livitz, Glenn Fittix, and then, moved, then yeah. we started reviewing whiskeys. Single here's, malts here's, came in. Yeah, here's where we're at. You it's still been, got a blue every once in a while. I, oh, yeah. I haven't, though, for You haven't for years now. But um, I haven't had red probably in seven years i'm i'm gonna say eight this is gonna be fun <laughs> this is gonna be real fun <laughs> yeah, this is exploratory for sure considering i haven't had an eight years wow well and if aqua vitae if roy is watching uh roy was stuck on a train uh and the only thing they had to offer was minis of johnny walker red label oh really <laughs> so yes yeah, he ordered one and he says by the time he got home, he'd had five or six of them, wow. and he was declaring it the best scotch ever. <laughs> <laughs> so five in, and you're one old. time we were at the uh, Brewers game, and we bought a bottle for 80 bucks in the suite. That yeah, was, a bottle uh, of red for We thought we were getting black, but <laughs> that's all they had. But yeah, the more you drink it, it seems to be a little bit more pleasant and yeah. goes down a little bit easier. So <laughs> I do get kind of a sour, burnt plastic almost. Well, yeah, to me, it's like a, it's damp, but there's a, yeah. there's a little bit of sweetness, but I feel like it's flat and it doesn't offer a whole lot on the nose. A little bit of a, of a, um, dank basement. Yeah. That's a, good, a good way of explaining it. A little lacquer varnish. A <laughs> dank basement. That's not wrong. <laughs> right. That is so, not wrong. Guys, if you want to drink Johnny Walker Red Label, it's. Nose is like a dank basement. I mean, how how else could we sell it, right? I mean, that sounds pretty good. Well, I've had a lot of people that here I like scotch, and they'll say, "Well, they've had Johnny Walker Red, and that they didn't like scotch." And I don't, I don't want to be rude to Red, but it just doesn't have a depth of flavor. It is very good with the uh, the old cocktails, though, the ginger ale and a slice of lemon. 
I got you know, it's not coming off real harsh on the palate though. It's not course, harsh. We're talking 40% ABV, I'm sure. I haven't looked. Um, I get really a, a brine, a salt. Not much really? peat or much smoke, but a uh, youth oak. Yeah, no peat. Little bit of a little bit of a citrus. I'd say there's a there's a it starts well and it kind of gives you that that um example of something that could be so good and then it just kind of leaves too soon um i get a, a hint of smoke but not so much yeah. uh, especially compared to the what we'll get in the black yeah i think it's a it's a good tease for for the rest of the uh the bottles we're about to go into so mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's definitely it's not it's not a 15 year or an 18 year <laughs> as an as a uh I mean, as an intro whiskey, it just seems like, I think you called it well when you said it feels a bit flat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I figured too, I mean, for the price, I'd, I'd probably, even if I'm on a budget, I'd rather spend seven to 10 more Yeah. and go towards the black, the black monkey right. shoulder, grainstone, um, Glen Morangy, yeah. you know, something Glenn along Grant. Even a Glen Grant's got some great stuff in there. Yeah. Tomatin 12, mm -hmm. New Alcus. So. <laughs> Deanston Virgin Oak. Right. Deanston's great. Yeah. The Tomatin 12 with that with that grain flavor forward is just oh, yeah. wonderful. Now this is 22 This was, or, or at least our store was $22 for the red. Right. Yeah, I think we got it we, for about. We got ours for about $18.99 yeah. on sale. Now, can you guys answer a question for me? The I believe the 12 and the 15, well, the rest of them would be a blended malt. But would, since this is a non-age statement, would this just be considered a blended whiskey or does it not matter? Well, it used to be 10. Is it not even labeled 10 year anymore? It used to be, well, it's not. It's just yeah, Johnny Walker you, red I haven't, label. I haven't picked up a red label in literally probably eight years. That's well, something I've never even noticed. Um, the red used to be 10. The black was 12. The green was 15. Mm -hmm. Now, the green used Still. to be the only one that was labeled malt. All malt. Okay. If, I, and I bet if you look, um, yeah, blended malt Scotch whiskey on the green label, and the black label even is blended Scotch whiskey. So they could be used in. We some are grains. the dummies, though. I, well, <laughs> here's what I think. I think these take um, malts, but I think the the red actually takes all sorts of whiskeys. It doesn't have to be a single malt put it, you know, mixed together. So I think that's why it. It might be considered a scotch whiskey and you guys out there in the chat room can correct me if i'm wrong i'm not sure yeah, i think it's got several grain different grains in yep. what are some of the comments coming in scott i'm going to pour black i better finish mine then because you know somebody out there is going to have the exact yep. um, adventures in whiskey bobby is saying check the back and i looked and it doesn't even have um you know it says aged a minimum of three years well, on the uh, back of the red to hit the scotch yeah. whiskey yeah but there's no 10 year right no reference to 10 gotcha. years hmm. yep there's your diageo on the back we're on the 12 year black are you ready yeah and then and then bobby again he points out that they're all they're all blended scotch whiskeys green is the only blended malt Okay. Okay. Good to know. Okay. Well, and I know the uh, the gold eighteen um, kind of you know got discontinued and platinum took over that, but then they brought a new gold back into the the business, right? Production. Which one? Sorry, I wasn't listening. The the, the, uh, the platinum, the gold oh, gone. Right, and then and the eighteen is back though. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They brought it back and okay. So I just jumped to the black, and already there's a little bit more. Something, something. <laughs> <laughs> There's more brine and more peat on the uh, black label than I had. Better nose too. A little more boom for your dynamite. We do have to do a quick shout out to Rob Whiskey in the Six. He just gave us a super chat of ten Canadian dollars. Ooh, it's like seventy eight cents. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and he, <laughs> points, he says it's just because Scotty is so damn sexy. Whoa. Huh. That's, that's me. I wasn't sure. Went with the whole Scotty. 
the whole idea. If we weren't live, I might have to agree. <laughs> we are at 6,001 subscribers. Wow. Hey, congrats, guys. Hey, congrats. Awesome. That's probably toast because of you guys. Oh, yeah, toast. Oh, oh. That's, that's because of you guys, probably, Robin Graham. <laughs> we never thought we'd get more than 17. <laughs> well, I got to say, we were we started last uh, March, and we were hoping we'd have 100 by, by winter time. So we're doing pretty good, too. <laughs> yeah, we're doing okay. <laughs> Yeah, because you guys are at 800, a little over 850 now. Yeah, about, I think, 858, 858 today. Oh, really? Unless That's... people are starting to leave because of this live stream. You know, maybe it's last Saturday. Well, well us. tell us a little bit about your channel and how you guys got started, right. how you know each other. Well, Rob and I are actually cousin in laws. Yep. My wife is his cousin. And, um, you know, I, I've been in cigars for about four years now. And the way I got into whiskey was a couple of my buddies were like, man, if you really want a good pairing, you know, we're in Wisconsin. So beer is huge. You know, put aside the beer, grab a whiskey and pair that. And, you know, it'll be even that much better. Yeah. Took me a few tries of being disgusted, but then it just like <laughs> beer, it grows on you. And I started loving it. And then not only did I like it, I could start to pick up the actual flavors yeah. I was getting. Yeah. So then I kind of got you on board and right. hey let's have a cigar and have some whiskey yeah you know and kind of feel like old souls and you know we were both uh expecting kids and we thought our lives weren't hectic enough so rob's like hey we should start a youtube channel this would be a lot of fun and in a community yeah. and interact with people and i'm like dude like yeah. we're not gonna have any time right well and at first we were trying to put funko pops and other entertainment uh movies and all that in it as well Figure that was too much, you know, too big of a variety. So we kind of narrowed it brought down. it narrowed it down to cigars and, and whiskey. But that's the thing. We're simple diversion. It's a it's a channel to just stop on by. Yep. You know, we, we all have hectic work lives and some personal lives. So this is a a time to plug in yeah. to simple diversion, have a drink, yep. relax, time and hang um, out. just have some fun. Yeah, for sure. And we've even brought pipes in as well lately. Yeah. So yeah. we're tr we're giving that a go. That's a lot more complex, but yeah, we're, we're learning a lot with uh with the pipes and a lot of good comments though about that mm. help us out but so you know we're always about honest if you want to call them reviews right yeah. but we, we try not to be like reviewers because we are not the pros we are we try to represent ourselves as two normal guys that are figuring this out as well and just hey what do two normal guys think of this whiskey is it worth buying yeah um and that's kind of how we um operate yeah i guess well, that's right on because the first rule is is everybody's palate's different. So, yep, absolutely. I mean, the one thing we talk about is like I lean heavy, heavy peat. Huh? Scott leans sherry, sherry, sherry. I like rye more than bourbon. He likes bourbon more than rye. But the 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 real value comes if somebody knows that my palate's similar to theirs and I really like something, then it might be up. To, you know, it might be worth their time to go get said bottle. But yeah. you know, if we were to say, oh, this is great. You, you know, you may try and go, ugh, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, the black. I mean, uh, Haas, Haas Formula One fan points out Bart that he's not European. He's a uh, Michiganian. <laughs> Michiganian. <laughs> that just means he's European by four generations. Because <laughs> I, I would be Germanian by three generations. Now, I want anybody to comment, anybody that's watching, comment, though, if you have not had a Johnny Walker or don't have one currently in your bar. I like the first part of that, have not had one. Right. Everybody's yeah. had one. I uh, I think. Yeah. Well, I actually had my first Johnny Walker last year. I bought the black label for pretty cheap for about, got it on sale for 22 bucks or something like that at a store nearby. And, and uh, yeah, I got into that. That was my first blended whiskey. So, wow. yeah, we went from black to blue. Black, yeah, we, we went from right black to, the to top, blue. You know? Oh, let's try the blue. There's a there's a, a bigger, you know, and better one. So, all right. So on the nose, Scott, what do you uh, got with the black? Um, I actually got a little bit of a lime, but um, hmm. brine, more peat and and citrus than yes than the red. And I've already had a sip or two of it, and it's definitely right. um, a little more flavor. Yeah, citrus is probably yeah. the surpriser I get here. I I almost think I've destroyed. My heavy peat palate, I can get a hint of a saltwater brine here, but I, and I know there's some smoke in it, but boy, it's so light to me that I used to think this was like, 
I mean, I, I remember, th I remember telling you, yeah, I can get the peat in there. Mm -hmm. I, I can yeah. barely even, it feels so weak on that, but I like that citrus nose. We've had uh, two people that have not had Johnny Walker, the, hmm. at, at least. I see the real clay F4AU has not had Johnny Walker Woo! and Hoagie Bear. F4AU. Hoagie Bear doesn't have any Johnny Walker, like never course. has. Like Perhaps course. someday the green or the blue. Um, and Hoagie Bear wants to know if we tried. There is a blue label special edition cask strength. I mm. um, have not had that. I would like that. F4AU. What is that? Is that a Corsair? <laughs> I would say that the black definitely offers a lot more oh, um, yeah. than the red. And I could see this being more of a daily sipper, um, straight or neat, um, more so than the red, definitely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, I get a little bit of peat in there. I mean, it's down and it's got a little bit of it's got a little bit of savory finish, which is kind of nice. It does linger. You're right, the red would just flat out disappear. Mm -hmm. And this one lingers a tad. It does. Still a little <clears throat> bit sour for me on the finish, though. Yeah. Just a See, little bit, like old wood. Even after I was drinking Black Label early on, and then I didn't have it for a long time, when I went back to it, there was more peat than I... I was able to pick up more peat than I had early on. And I, I, I could remember people telling me the Black Label is peaty. And I was like, no, there's. Right. I don't really remember any peat in it. But once I, once my palate had developed a little bit, when I went back to it, well, I briny went, and peat. And I definitely. bought a bunch of double black, which is a little more, a little smokier. Mm -hmm. I would yeah. say if um, if you're bringing somebody new to try a peated whiskey, that the black would be a good start, because like Bart said, you know, it's not overly right. peaty, but it can at least introduce you. Like I made the mistake already of introducing people to art big 10 right. right off the bat or something like that. And they're just like, Whoa, too yeah. much. Yeah. Like me. <laughs> that was my first scotch a while back. That's what Bart does. Cask strength art big. <laughs> Boom. Try this. You're a beginner. <laughs> Not even true. <laughs> the very first tasting we were at, I tried a log of wool in 16 and it, all I got was ashtray smoke <laughs> and I, did not like it. Now I have it, and it's like a sweetest, smokiest, mm. savoriest. And I'm like, man, I can't. And so I remember my first try of that, and I was yeah. like, oh, oh no. <laughs> so, that log of in 16, that's hard to beat. Actually, oh. that was the first um, peated whiskey that I tried, and I, surprisingly, I loved it. I, was, I, I drank some, and I'm just like, I just ate a campfire. <laughs> like this is awesome, and now it's to the point where I, I'm afraid to even open my bottle because I don't want it to disappear. So, no. I just buy two. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, and uh, Frank Lampert is is, is watching. Okay. He actually he gave us samples of the Island Green, which is a travel oh, retail um, version, and yes. I haven't tried mine Ooh, yet. Did you? you? Haven't. I no, did. Did you? I, I wrote some notes down, but I don't have it here. Hmm. It was interesting. So I what's actually the difference like between the, the green, green and the island green. Gosh, I'm trying to remember. And he told me, ask him to explain it again. Yeah, Frank, expand on the different on the island green. What the difference is? Because I, when I sampled the the bottle, I the little sample I got. Oh, he just did. He's a, he's ahead oh, of us. Good. He's a, well. He I, should be. Island green uh -huh. is to green what double black is to black. Right. Uh -huh. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, that, okay. that was what he said. But then I, I and then he explained even further, saying what it had that made it more of like the double blacks peatier a little smokier mm. Mm. but i actually tried some of his oh hey cowbell oh, hey, yeah, hey, super man. chat came in from whiskey music Ooh, thank hey, you whiskey music going wow i see from canada wow you can't stop it i know <laughs> well the cowbell well, is out of control the first won't time. stop the first time we used it, it played one time and then stopped. And now I it's like on that. a repeat. I oh, I thought you guys were just keep bringing it in there. <laughs> <laughs> He's calling for more. All right. More um, cowbell. <laughs> yeah. And Bob, Adventures in Whiskey Bobby Childs, if you guys don't know, he's a, a whiskey. He yeah, tuber as well. Orleans. Check out Adventures in Whiskey. But he's okay. he's really a Johnny Walker um, aficionado, you could say. He knows quite a bit. He has, he has quite a few in his um, bar. Um, but he's pointing out that uh, the Island green uses more smoke than the green label mm. does. 
Ooh. I'd be interested in trying that. That's pretty hard to find, isn't it? Well, it's, tra tra yeah, it's, tra yeah. it's travel retail only. So okay. You have okay. to be in the international. Gotcha. Are you guys ready for the green? Yes. This is the one I'm most looking forward to. Look at that. Awesome. You got a cork. Oh, that's no. It's the oh, they this do. Is, yeah, yeah. This is the. Uh, this was. This is the bottles it's when like they the North Korean when they discontinued. Yeah, I know. And it was off of the shelf for a year, year and a half. When they came back, right? It was. And if you notice, it's bigger than the other bottles. When they first brought it back, they had it as a thicker glass, yeah. thicker bottom. Oh, wow. And and a little bit taller than the others. Now I think they're back down the it, the new fifteen. Had the back. easy pour spout, like yeah. the bartender spout. Well, yeah, that one does. Like you heard them pulling the cork. Right. And how old is your green label? When did you guys buy that one? About two six, months ago. Oh, yeah. that, that early, huh? Oh, yeah, because we keep finishing it. Yeah. <laughs> and then that one, I we have we got another one. Here. A new one waiting for us, so. You're making your own blend? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You've seen your water back there, too. Yes, okay. I've been working on okay. it. Well, I noticed when you guys brought up, uh, Graham, you brought up cigars, and I know you guys are reviewing whiskey and cigars. Um, mm -hmm. Bart loves the peat, but he does not like cigars. True. I can't figure that out. Right. Yeah. Bart, but, um, you would love cigars. Just I don't, don't inhale. I love the bourbon. I love the contemplativeness of a cigar. It just looks that or, or like the uh, – Oh, I was in the army, but but uh, the Gulf one or two or whatever. He had the Marine that was in the palace smoking the cigar. Just had an old Sergeant Rock feel to it. <laughs> Just to take you all the way back. You guys know who Sergeant Rock is? I do not. Um, no. It was an old <laughs> DC comic. So World War II, and he always had a cigar stub chomped down and just taking care of business. Gotcha. <laughs> I didn't do superhero comics. I did like World War II comics. Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, to us, I mean, cigars and whiskey go hand in hand because Absolutely. they're the finer things in life. You know, um, it takes so long to make a great whiskey. It takes so long to make a great cigar. And just the process for each of them intrigues both of us yeah. and interests both of us. And when you put them together, I don't know, it's like magic. And We've talked plenty of times in our videos, like cigars seem to bring people together. Yep. Um, it helps us to get off our phones and actually have conversations for a change. Yeah. And yep. um, so it's it's more so the the art of smoking the cigar and the hobby of doing it, the act of doing it is is what we really enjoy. It's just then you have whiskey as well, and it's just magic. <laughs> I got a couple of uh, comments here and, and some new guys that are tuning in and watching new guys and or gals. Harry McClary, though, and I seen him commenting a little bit ago, but he says, Harry, Bart, Harry McClary. Harry McClary. I love that name. Bart, test it. <laughs> test it. A, the green is a vatted malt, so he will be testing that. There you go. It means a bunch of malts blended together. We've got, um, we had a hello from Germany, Michael Orman. Oh. I have oh. not seen him tune in before. And Guten Fabs, Tag. Guten Fab, Tag. yep, Fab's Dram comments Guten Tag from oh, Germany. See, there we go, another Guten Tag. Yep, mm. we're at in Germany. I I lived in uh, Heidelberg for a little while. Really? So in high school, yeah. So pretty oh. familiar with Germany. You speak German? Uh, not really. <laughs> not all. All right, I was going to say Boston a bit. Close. Not much. He just likes to pr practice all the swear words. Yeah, all the swear <laughs> words and. Uh, if I need something, I can I can ask for that, but that's about it. Ein Bier Ein Bier bitte. That's about yeah, all. See, I can everybody's do. got Ein Bier bitte. <laughs> <laughs> we all need help. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, just the the nose and the palate on the green label is just step up, superb. Yeah, it's compared to it's a it's a strong but clean nosing. Um, a little bit of smoke, but more citrus mm. for me. I would agree. I agree, hundred percent. And I do see ours is 43%. It's the first one to bump it up a little bit. Um, hopefully, your bottling as well is 43%. Yep. Sure is. It is. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like an orange peel. Almost like somebody just squeezed the orange peel and peel in my face. <laughs> yes, very much. Yeah. That's great. And I might be in the minority, but I feel like uh, I get that citrusy orange peel, but mm. then like a chocolate covered orange peel almost 
Okay. Not, not a whole lot of chocolate. It's not dominating, but there's a little bit, and it just kind of mixes in really nice. Mm. And then a waft of smoke. Yes. Yeah. Mm. The finish is definitely longer lasting than the other two. It is. It's that's where I'm getting the chocolate that you were mentioning. Well, we got Carl Van Wallagem. Wallagem. Perfect. From Belgium. Oh, love that. Sorry, I'm I'm sure I'm sure totally spot on. butchered that. Shane Keating tuning in from I from Ireland. Wow. Alan K. Right. Yeah, quite a few new yeah, guys. Yeah, around maybe the world, are, baby. These all, world. Maybe those, these are all your guys. Those are your cigar in. aficionados. <laughs> Bringing worlds oh, together. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, Thomas Buck is asking a good question about Super Chats, um, and he wants to know if 100% goes to us. It does not. It does not. YouTube does keep a take of it. And we don't even know how much. 15%? No, nah, it's 20 to 30%. Oh, Lord, that's brutal. But, <laughs> the, you know, the thing is the way you look at it, it we have this platform sure. because of YouTube. Exactly. Right? Yep. Uh, they don't charge anything to use it. Right. Right. You know, you upload, you post videos, you grow. I mean, so that's how they are getting outside of, uh, you know, advertising for ISIS and oh, you know stuff like that <laughs> there we go this one's banned <laughs> all right now we're going yeah right. he's got he's this show banned now. right here that's one of the super jet right there boom ban <laughs> you just got us flagged with the word isis boom. <laughs> they're watching us now that's right we could be talking about the egyptian god that's possible <laughs> it's so far, and I know we all just did red and black, but it's easy to see why so many people claim the green as their favorite mm -hmm. of the Johnny Walkers. In our area, $50 range, well worth it. Yeah, yeah. it's got a little bit more taste bud travel. Mm -hmm. You know, I get that smoke. I get a little bit of a, a sharp, like a, a tanginess to it. Mm. And the, uh, the finish, I still get a, I get a bit of oak on the finish. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. Now, in our area, I feel like the green is like it's like the lesser known of yeah. the of the lineup. You know, everybody knows the red and the black, and even I've heard of you know the platinum or the gold, but they don't talk so much yeah. about the the green. It's even harder to find for us. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of interesting because it's my favorite too. I think we usually just get it at Total Wine, right? Yep. Yeah. Love Total. A little bit of a powdered sugar sweetness with it okay. as well. Yeah, I see that. Hmm. Yeah. Kind of near the finish. Is that where you're getting it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If, if only the blue label had a uh, a price tag of about 130 or something, it'd be a little bit more reasonable. You know, even uh, holidays, you can find it for 170. Yeah. Yeah. We saw it for sale here recently, about 175. Mm -hmm. so, okay. I haven't yeah. had it. I haven't had the blue since you had it as a uh, years ago as a holiday dram. Yeah. Now even um, the store that we frequent, Auburn, they have they got in uh, two hundred milliliter bottles of it. Oh wow! And they're they're forty nine ninety nine. You know, and the hopes oh, okay. are, you know, they're hoping to entice people, you know, for, to be able to try it, buy right. it, try it for a lot cheaper hmm. than than spending the two hundred dollars for the whole bottle. Sure. One last note on the green for the finish uh, in my opinion it, it does stay for a little bit but it doesn't outstay its welcome and it has a little bit of smoke with a little bit of spice mm. getting mm -hmm. a little spice dancing around on the tongue doing the salsa i think we got an isis super chat <laughs> uh-oh <laughs> now it won't play there it goes hey a uh, super chat from thomas buck does he have a question so, to go with? No question, chat. but just comments that uh, twenty percent takes not too bad. Thanks for the content. Boom. So thank you for tuning in, Thomas Buck. There Appreciate it. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Roy is, must have just joined us. I see somebody saying Aqua Vitae in the house. Thanks wow. for tuning in. Hey, Roy. That train was stuck again. Yeah. <laughs> we already did the red label, uh, Roy. Your uh, best whiskey in the world. Right. <laughs> what are we moving to the brand new one or, or uh the they don't have the rye right. so the wine cask will be we're gonna next. unscrew it here go give me some water real quick please thank you uh no <laughs> oh. 
Uh, Claire, Claire the third is pointing out he likes the platinum and the green better than the blue. Oh, really? Well, that makes me happy because we have the platinum. So we that, that, that makes it. me happy. Yeah. I I, yeah. Uh, I hear I hear that the platinum has a better nose than the blue, but the blue has a nicer palette from people that I've talked to. So I've never had the platinum. So the the blue really does have a nice palette. Uh, you know, it's very sweet. It's got a nice peat, you know, touch that, that comes in very nicely done. It used to carry a 21 year age statement, which it, several years ago they took off because it used to have red was 10, black was 12, green 15, gold was 18, and the blue label was 21 year. Yeah, I, I so, saw that. I saw that online. You can still kind of find that. But um, I also hear and correct me if I'm wrong, that there is a a 50 year old scotch in that in that blue label as well that they blend into that, which wow. I guess is one of the reasons why they up the price so high. Really? The like, rarest whiskeys is that what they promote. Yeah. The rarest. That's just what I heard or I saw online. But they got like a thimble full. Can't believe everything. <laughs> nope. All right. So tell me now. I'm a uh I've seen I've seen Scott smoke a cigar or two. Doesn't intrigue me at all, but I'm I'm I don't know. I wore contacts for years, so I was like, eh, no smoke. But tell me, what does this cigar do for you? Well, like we talked about, it's um, you mean not that only metaphysical kind of like you know where where does it hit you? <laughs> well, <laughs> that depends. Um, you know, some of them have a higher nicotine content. Um, some of it's the flavor is just yeah. You can have you know you can have a, a mild body cigar. You can have a medium body and then a, yep. a full body. Typically, if you're starting to smoke cigars, you want to start with the mild body. Yeah. Because the full body A has a lot more flavor, could have more nicotine content, and typically you could get sick just by smoking a, a full body cigar. It's it's happened to me um, once in a great while. It'll still happen. Full of sugar, me. you'll be all right. Yeah, the trick is to have a, a spoonful of sugar right after the cigar, and that'll up your sugar uh, levels right away, and you won't get sick. But hmm. what it does for me is a, it's relaxing, um, and it's just like whiskey where. The flavors on the palate are really enjoyable. Yeah. Um, you know, different cigars have different flavors. The nosing, you know. And um, I don't typically enjoy the infused ones. It's all the natural yeah. cigars, um, and um, it's just the the act of doing it. You know, with Rob talking, but then yeah. also the palate and the flavors yeah. that they bring. Yeah, we'll, we'll get a cigar going around when our uh, fantasy league every year. We we'll come together, have you know, nice lunch or something, and then everybody lights up a cigar, and we all just kind of chat. So it's it's a good time. And if you're new to cigars, basically what you're doing is you're pretending like you're sucking through a straw. Just bring it into your mouth, let it kind of overtake your tongue, and then release it. You're not inhaling, and then yeah. that's it. So you're getting the flavors, and then you're releasing. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe we'll have to get you on a a, a live feed on our channel, and we'll, we'll get part <laughs> to have a cigar. <laughs> yeah, well, when spring rolls around, I know you guys said uh, you'd been outside, and it was like 22 degrees for yeah. a cigar. Um, I'm a little bit more fair weather fan than that. Once spring rolls around, we'll we'll hook up and do a live stream on your channel, sitting outside smoking a cigar and drinking whiskey. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. Sounds like a lot of fun. And we talked about this um, last night, but we do think that bourbon typically is the better pairing. Yes. With a cigar, sometimes Scotch has such delicate, delicate yes yeah. flavors that they can sometimes be taken down a bit with a cigar. And yeah. bourbon, it's kind of like it raises both yeah. both sides. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. I, I had found that as well. Um, smoke, drinking scotch and smoking a cigar, a lot of times the the finer nuances of the scotch were lost in the smoke of the cigar. Bourbon being a little bit stronger, you know, on the palate hangs in there a little bit better, especially a uh, Elijah Craig barrel proof. Wow. Yeah, that's I a don't good, know if I'd want a good one cigar. I wouldn't yeah. want to taint it with anything. <laughs> so, so on the nose on this wine cast, can anybody else get uh, paint thinner? Yeah, I got a blast of uh, <laughs> paint in <laughs> I, I prefer the red over this one. Glue. Actually. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And, That's uh, funny you said glue because we Yeah, They're I got glue. a little glue. Perfect. Elmer's just glue. opened it. It's like the, the old stick glue that we used as kids, you know? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we'll let that air for a yeah, minute. Yeah, that one maybe yep. open up this, a little bit. Oh, you went so this is Johnny Walker's Blender's Batch Wine Cask Blend. It's 40%. 
Uh, Blender's Notes, it's an experimental blend of grain and select malt whiskeys, including some matured in wine casks. Light and vibrant with notes of orchard fruit and red berries. I'm missing that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even smell the wine. Show me that patch. <laughs> now, this was uh, $30 here. What In your area, what are you guys looking yeah, at? Yeah, we got it for $30. Yeah. Exactly. Consistent. Wow. How much was that? Uh, did the rye go for? That's been a while. That's probably at least a year and a half uh, mm -hmm. old. It does have a 10 year age statement. It's a 10 year. Um, 46%. Okay. It's a little bit higher. Finished in rye casks. And I want to say it was like 40, 35 or 40, mm -hmm. if I remember okay. right. Because I grabbed the four grain at 1.2, which is one before the wine casking. Huh. And we never reviewed it, did we? Yeah, it's still it's sitting on the two review. Did you guys see that they have a special edition 18 year out there too? I did not. I, was, I, I just oh, saw okay. an 18 year back. Is it another one or is it a special edition? It's like a special edition gold 18 or something. Yeah. It's, Maybe they brought back the old gold. I, I'm not sure how we that just works. saw it in the store and glanced at it, but yeah, um, something else that looks like a limited edition that's out right now. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's something we never really tried. We've talked about the other day is rye whiskey. We tried it one time, but uh, I'd like to get more into that, dig, dig our teeth into that a little bit. Or I would, I'll, I'll give it a shot, but it didn't really do yeah. a whole lot for me. But obviously, I've only had it once. So. Sure. I shot. dig the rye. Try a little bit of uh, Pikeville. Pikeville rye okay. is delicious. I saw you guys having the Pikeville with uh, Bourbon Night. It's Bourbon Night. So yep. that kind of got and me. Mama Scott. Deep. Yep, Mama Scott. Mama Scott got to try. Mama Scott, I, yeah, that's right. We, we did a blind sixteen bottle rye shootout. That was real, kind of educational. And then uh, the Rittenhouse rye is a real, a real nice, uh, inexpensive bottled and bond rye. And the Michters, which is a little bit, they're they're toasted. Uh, what was that one? A toasted oak, toasted barrel. What they call that? Toasted barrel finish. Right. Yeah, little, Michters toasted barrel. That finished was rye. delicious. Oh, well, I've been wanting to try the rabbit hole rye. I'm a big, well, I guess we're, we're kind of big fans of rabbit hole uh, for such a, a young bourbon coming out. You know, their distillery opens up this year. and um, But, yeah, we, we almost bought that bottle, but I uh, went with the uh, PX Sherry instead. So, yeah. All right, I think this is benefiting from being open a little bit. I got a little bit more of, the, of a sweetness on the finish, maybe from the wine. I'm going to let that sit even bit longer uh, a couple of questions a while back someone saw my two i got two eh tailors up there over my head uh one is a barrel proof one is the four grain uh both delicious both good um do do, do harry mcclary we are not going to do a shootout with the johnny walkers <laughs> well, this is right here this shootout this right here <laughs> that, that, this, would be, this would be a family shootout Oh, that was the whiskey junkie that saw the Colonel Taylor up there. Um, our Bobby Childs Adventure in Whiskey is pointing out that the Platinum was renamed to the Ultimate 18. Okay. Okay. So, and I think, and he probably knows for sure, I think Johnny Walker ran into um, uh, supply issues just because of demand, ran out of 18. Um, I think the Platinum comes out. There's no age statement on it. And now they're back. They've got some 18-year whiskey back, so... Oh, your rye one smells great. Is this is this the one where they finished it it's in a rye, rye cask? cask. Right. right. Okay, yeah. Uh, blended scotch whiskey, 10-year-old, finished in rye cask. Rye cask finish, 46%. I just tried that uh, the wine cask, and uh, it's very different. Yeah, that's a good word. Different. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Hmm. I'm gonna let it I'm, I'm, a more. I still don't get a whole lot on the nose, and it's what I do get. I can't even really put my finger on it, but I don't really like it. Hmm. I, I do like the palate a little bit more than the nose. I'm yeah, the palate is definitely better than the nose. I got a real buttery, creamy taste at first. Yeah, I, I was getting some buttery cream. Um, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of expect a little bit the wine taste. You know, yeah, I definitely get the wine influence. Yeah, and um, I, I actually get a little bit of that. So. Yeah, I would say I would agree with everybody and say that the palate's much better than the nose. 
And I wish you guys had the uh, the rye cast finish. It's out of these, it's got a real nice buttered popcorn finish. It definitely Ooh. picks up a little bit of the spice of the rye. So mm -hmm. Now, is that still out for uh, to buy in the stores, or I haven't seen it. No. Oh boy, I've Let's seen the. Um, I think our local liquor store might still have some. Okay, we might get, be able to get that. I'm not sure. It could be more of the the wine cask, though. I'm not sure. Uh, Dan E did point out a little bit ago that it was the thirty five dollar range on the rye cask. It, it probably, if you see it, it's probably worth picking up. Oh, it that's was the a, favorite out of all these for me. Really, oh, that says a lot. Yep. Yep. It's got that. I, I love that buttered popcorn finish. And like I said, a little mm. bit of that rye spiciness on the forefront. You just saying buttered popcorn makes my mouth water. A <laughs> <bit>. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I don't, I don't gravitate towards this wine cask personally and um, somebody else might really like it, but um, it just doesn't fit my, my palate. Well, it doesn't agree with me. Yeah. I, I will give Johnny Walker a lot of credit and, you know, trying something new and different mm -hmm. and switching things up a little bit. Yeah. I love the experimentation. Let me come back and try this. Can you guys hear my printer going behind me? I, I, I heard it a couple seconds ago, but I didn't know what it was. <laughs> I just thought that was your cat. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what happened. What are we getting a teletype? I mean, what's yeah, going the on? wife's printing some stuff off. Wow. Very nice. All right. See, real show. <laughs> coupons like groupon that's a groupon right there <laughs> so since bart was talking about the double black i kind of want to just crack ours open and take a taste of that if you guys don't mind. do it do it yeah yeah go ahead you bet i i think i've had this bottle for at least eight months and we haven't even opened it yet Sweet. oh really what we do is we buy when we can and then it sits because i don't want too many open bottles at the same time that's what we do yeah, <laughs> well, that's not even true. I'm like, oh, I really, I really want to try this, and so I go buy it, and then it sits for eight months, and that's how it goes, I guess. Yeah. Harry McClary is asking, do you guys ever thought of blending your own whiskey? I blend not all the time, but uh, several times. I I, tried. I don't. What did we do on the uh, on the shootout? So we're doing what do you call it? A Millennium well, bottle? Or no, something? Infinity like, bottle. Infinity. Infinity. You know, infinity bottles are, are, are one thing you can take, you know, all the whiskeys that you try or, or your bourbons, you take a all sample from each one yeah. and you add them. And as you have a drink or two, you add another bottle in there. And so the you, bourbon one we did was good. Yeah. But I mean, I've even taken, if I wanted a sherry scotch with a little bit of a splash of peat or something, you know, I get me a good pour of a sherry and just add a little, a couple drops of a, of a heavy peated whiskey into it. I do not do that. Um, I'd be afraid to do that. If you take a, <laughs> if you take like Elijah Craig barrel proof and oh. add just a splash of a Lafroig to it, mm. very good. I'll try yours. Yeah, we've done that before. I know. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't bad. I remember you. I remember you I did that. Or was it? No, it's Lafroig. You add uh, just a splash of the Elijah Craig barrel proof to like Lafroig ten. Well, I'm gonna forget, but the fellow that's joined in from uh, he joined the other. They created a new show. Scotch and Sniff's brother left and they created the new show together. Whiskey Untitled. He's in watching. Whiskey Untitled. His blendings were really good. He sent a, several samples. And I, we do these, I do these little blind quick hitters and I, I call them Frankensteins, but I tried a couple of them and I was like, wow, this is really good. That guy knows what he's doing. He's good. I haven't even thought about doing that myself. Typically, and I know, I know this can benefit the whiskey, but I typically don't even have water. Sometimes I will, but I like to enjoy it for what they gave me. I like to just take it yeah. as it is and drink it. So I guess, well, I guess it opens up the flavors a little bit though, that sometimes. chemical reaction that they, sure. That sometimes. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes just being that I don't even add water. I wouldn't even think about blending right, scotches right. together and making my own. Right. So. Yeah. So, so do you guys understand why with the double black uh, people pour a little bit on their hand, do the whole rubbing oh, yeah. their hands together and smell it? You bet. Yeah, you can do that with anything. I had a buddy of mine that had like a real expensive bottle and he'd gone through, uh, I forget how shoot he told me, but um, he had me, we poured about a dime's worth, rubbed it together, and then it was like a three sniff deal and it, and it kind of transitioned from the wood, the grain, 
And then the spirit, and as your hand warmed it and the alcohol evaporated, you definitely got some real distinct nose differences as you went back. And it was when he did that, I said, man, where did you learn that? And he, he'd been through something on the bourbon uh, trail tour where one of the distillers had shown him the, the trick or whatever. Oh, I was going to wow. think that uh, he liked the smell so much. He was just going to use it for cologne and then it just worked. But. <laughs> Now I will tell you, we do it whenever we spill like a little drop of it. We'll we'll quickly kind of just wipe it up, and then yeah, hey, there you go. Yep, that's when I've and and, and uh, but he had a real. I cannot remember what he had, but it was a real nice bottle, and and he he said, "Hey, try this," and I was like, "Are you sure?" And he's like, "Yeah," and it it was definitely uh, it was like a three part nosing experience. Did the lotion wow. you had on your hands though mm -hmm. interfere with the whiskey? It wasn't really <laughs> the strawberry lotion. Yeah, the strawberry <laughs> lotion. I prefer uh, either mango or kumquat. <laughs> uh, so, uh, a comment from Carl, real quick, who's in uh, in Belgium, or the, he, he wants to see us. It, or it, I would like to see your review on two Belgian whiskeys: Gouden Curlus Single Malt and Belgian Owl. I would no. like either one. Well, we had uh, Whiskey Jason. We did a live stream with him, and he had arranged for us to get Slurs, uh, which is gone. I don't have that bottle, but we did the Glen Ells, the Journey, and Finch. So we have had some okay. Belgian Belgian whiskeys. That was like two and a half years ago, wasn't it? No, it wasn't that long been, ago. Oh, no, never mind. We haven't even been doing a live stream for that long. That oh. Japanese whiskey. The hibiki, I've heard, is really good from Japan. Yeah, hibiki's good. Yeah. The uh, Yamasaki 12 years kind of making it back into some liquor stores, and and that's that's good, too. I think it's uh, because it's so rare, it's a little high for what you're getting, but, uh, uh, but the Yamasaki 18 was – delicious very very sharing that'll be nice when i that keep gets meaning back to drink more stuff. of that when i'm at your place you know what you open the circus i'll give you the bottle <laughs> <laughs> just kidding i don't even know how good the circus is <laughs> <laughs> so trying this double black johnny walker it's actually really really delicious man it still doesn't compare to like an art bag or a lag of one but, no, but it's can, definitely a lot peer yeah you can taste well. the smoke and uh so it's definitely I'm, different than the other Johnny Walkers. I'm really enjoying it. I think What's saying Yam oh, saying Yamasaki meant what? Is there a question associated? With another no. 78 cents? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, super, right. Super chat from uh, Roy. Aquavite, from Scotland. 10 pounds, which oh, is wow. like $20. Yeah, that's like $192. Wow. That's 190 yeah. Yeah, the pounds <laughs> worth way, way, way much. <laughs> <laughs> Should we tease next week's show? Do it. Well, let's do it. I want to hear it. Beat this club. Just do no, the thing. Oh, no, no, right. the live oh, stream next Sunday. Oh, yeah, oh, the live stream. The phone Please. call. Sure. Via phone call. Are you them. sure it's going to trigger? It's supposed to. We've it's supposed confirmed. to trigger. We've confirmed. Next Sunday, uh, 2 p.m., we will have John Glazer from Compass Box on. Via phone. Via oh, phone. Wow. He, yeah. He wasn't willing to... He wasn't able to go live in video. We gave him the option. Right. He was like, he said, well, let's, you too? Uh, let's nah. stick with the phone. Yeah. Call. We compare it to like when you ask a girl out and she says, well, we can get coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Are you asking me on a date? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's just like, well, we can, we can try a little bit of latte and then we'll see. <laughs> a latte what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. So we'll see. We're basically uh, going to, uh, we'll do a phone interview. We do not know even how long said interview will last. No. <laughs> but don't they have something special getting ready to come out that he's going to speak of as well? Yeah. We don't That's even know what that know. is. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I was surprised okay. to see Tracy on last week with you guys from Glenfiddich. Mm -hmm. Tracy, oh, she was awesome. It was, yeah. a great, so, it was a great show. Since you brought her up. You bring her up. Yeah. She sang a song. What are you guys going to sing? Oh, yeah. Oh, Gra Graham's in practice all day. <laughs> and I would do anything for love, yeah, but I won't do I'll that. <laughs> there you go. Oh, well, we Did you prep him? Nice, you yeah. prep him for that? It was that? unscripted, so, uh, so we tried. <laughs> that was good. And we need a bad joke. 
Oh, I don't oh, know. Those are joke. harder to come up with on the spot. Please, I, I, got, I, got a, I got a really bad joke. I found on a popsicle stick. Um, I don't even know if it's a joke, but it was there. That's why it's bad. So what is the biggest diamond in the world? Now, Scott tries to figure these out. <laughs> yeah, <I've> 10 seconds. <laughs> a baseball diamond. Perfect. See? Now oh, it's not yeah. even funny. Oh, 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 that's bad. See, you that's a bad joke. That's bad. Total worst See? joke. Oh, well, that's the worst one. joke, yeah. Wow. A base Got some other ones, but I don't know if they're appropriate for the show. So gotcha. <laughs> We're, we've already yeah, mentioned kid ISIS. Kid. We're in trouble. We're flagged already. Or if it was uh Christmas time, I'd say, why is uh, Santa Claus always so jolly? Scott's uh, actually, I probably shouldn't finish that one. All right, uh, there you go. We'll leave that one. After, after the show, there you go. After the show, it's the milk and cookies. <laughs> exactly. Perfect. Uh, back to the wine cask blend. It's actually pretty pleasant. Well, it opens it's, up a little bit. I think it's pretty smooth. It's pretty sweet. It's forty percent. So I mean, it's not a heavy hitter. Uh, uh, that thirty dollar range. Yeah, it's worth it. That's nice. I think. Well, it might be one of those things that. Once you open the bottle and you actually get down a little bit further, you know, the oxygen could help that. You know, if people don't know out there, scotches tend to change the yeah. more you drink them. Um, so, you know, sitting out a little bit, keep drinking it. It could get yeah. better for you. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. I, I think just letting that one air out a little bit has improved its flavor. But I'm pouring more of the rye. <laughs> it's just making us jealous over here. I yeah. know. I'm sorry. All I can say is sweet buttered popcorn. Oh man. Well, I don't like popcorn, so I guess that doesn't really do not like me. popcorn. Oh, oh, that's especially that. in liquid form. Come on. I don't like watching people eat it or the smell of it or really you can you can frolic with it, you can throw <laughs> it at each other, you can catch it. The <laughs> they just watch people there's like oh yeah, you can <laughs> string it, you can turn it, it into is... a decoration. Then you uh, step on it, and it's just I I love popcorn. <sighs> Man, now, Tom, Tom, what a good movie! Asking, and I was hoping he was still watching because he's become a big circus or, or a big uh, compass box fan. Sure, he's asking if I'm going to open up the circus if John Glazer asks. That's been that was the deal. I said if we get John Glazer on the show, you could caveat I would open it. You could caveat it and say does just there audibly. Does the phone call count as being on know. the show? I'm going to leave that up to you. <laughs> <laughs> because i think if we do well enough he'll come back and maybe we should not open it in hopes that he'll come back in visual form hmm. you could open don't you have a backup of the extravaganza yeah it's open oh yeah that one's open i got a backup of everything now except for the three year and the circus wow you yeah. know we may bring that up maybe he'll be able to sell you a backup of the circus mm. I'm jealous of all your shelves. Well, I guess I have oh, a, I have a backup nice. of the circus. I haven't paid for it yet. Oh, what? Yeah. How'd you manage that one? Dude? There hasn't been a backup of the circus. He's watching. He's watching. Wow. Well, mm -hmm. Do that. Come through with that. <laughs> <laughs> Although the general, I know you opened the general. I was not a fan of the general. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it was old. It was dried wood. I figured out I didn't like the, uh, I didn't like the, I'm not an overly oaky flavor kind of guy. That's all that's left of the, what, how that's, many years old? 37? Well, they never really said it was supposedly a 30, I think a 33 year old and a 41 or a 42 yeah, year old. Super old. That I, was blended together and then recast for a while right. to marry, basically. Yep. And I didn't, uh, I mean, it was okay, but I, I expected maybe my, maybe my uh, bar was raised too high. Yeah. Have you guys ever had a cigar that you were just like, yeah, yeah, and then you're like, uh-uh, didn't work? Um, No, I've had cigars that I was just like, uh-uh, it's not working, but yeah. Well, we've had a couple that were kind of, uh, you know, they, hey, try this out. And we tried it. We actually did a review on them a couple times, and it doesn't really turn out very great, but. <laughs> wow. All right, well, and who was the uh, cigar guy that actually had one of our shirts that was outside under a propane heater and he had a chimney? Charles going? Wallingford. Charles Wallingford. Yeah, because he did a cool he thing. Does. It was cold and he lit up and then he came back like an hour and a half later and he was down near the down low and he kind of gave a review on it. That was yeah. neat. Is that what you guys do? 
Pretty much. We uh, will we'll light it up, kind of let you know what, you know, what we're, we're kind of uh, what's on our palate at the time. We'll, and then we'll kind of leave for a few minutes, let it burn about halfway down. We'll come back and and we get a bunch of different flavors. Yeah, so. typically you have, you know, th there's the first third, the second third, and then the last third. Yeah. And depending on the cigar, they those flavors could change yeah. periodically. You might get a lot of pepper or, uh, you know, spices in the beginning. And then toward the end, you might get more toffee or vanilla. Earth, Earth, cocoa, yeah. you know, flavors like wow. that. Yeah. All right. You have me a little intrigued. Yeah, good. Because my, my my other hobby is board games. I, I was going to say, I, I looked up your channel last <laughs> night. <laughs> now, how did you, Scott must have already prefaced this or something. <laughs> well, I, I was watching me. some. He told, me, he told us that he was wishing you would ask him to be on that channel, too. Yeah. Wow. There you go. Well, he's got his own. He's got a show called Knit and Shit. <laughs> I'm going to. Now, he what is Knit and Shit about? Yeah, he knits he like blankets and and like and like hot pads for your oven. Sometimes even while he's in the restroom. That's is that, is that the show that you have with your mom? Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be yeah. She got to show me. She's got to show me how to knit. I actually did have a gal that I work with that came in with some sewing needles and knitting stuff and said, "Give this to Scott." <laughs> so. Well, that'd be a cool channel. I'd like but that. I will tell you, scotch goes with everything. I bet it goes with knitting. It definitely goes with board games, and it goes with cigars. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Risky in general. Best board game is uh, Risk. Now, I know that's too well known, so you probably think that's overrated. but No, no, I'll give you a twist on that. Look into, have you looked at Risk Legendary? I have not. However, I have been playing the Game of Thrones Risk, and I like that. All right, you may uh, check it out. A guy that worked at Hasbro for years named Rob Davio was asked to how could he spark something up, and it's still risk, but the uh, the uh, game has little like envelopes and secret areas in the box that when you achieve certain objectives, you basically play risk over 15 games, and when you wow. the, the board changes, stickers go on the board, you tear up cards, it, it kind of uh, has a storyline to it. Wow, that's pretty so cool. Get a, yeah, if you get a chance, it was so powerful that he was able, he retired, started his own company, and now there's all kinds of board games that modify with the uh, with the legendary tag to it, make some more story about them. Scott, cool. basically, his eyes are bleeding at this point. I fell time. asleep in that. Yeah, he was like, what? <laughs> so so I, I noticed in your videos, you guys have a lot of uh, Star Wars action figures behind you. You got Chewbacca and... And uh, some other, like, it looks like they're worth some money, some action figures. So so where do you guys, are you guys always been a big Star Wars fans? Or Yes, that was what's your favorite movie. movie. And what's your, what's your favorite Star Wars? Empire. Well, guys, I know this might come as a surprise. <laughs> I, I saw Star Wars in the movie theater. Yes. No, no way. It's true. And I saw episode one in the movie theater. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, that was the first magic. I'd, I'd probably seen four or five movies, and and by the time Star Wars was out, and I got my parents to go down. Uh, it just blew me away. So, yeah. And then Empire Strikes Back, I think, is still one of the best movies I've ever seen. I agree. Yeah, Empire Strikes Back is definitely the best, in my opinion. But my second favorite, and I got to get a lot of heat from this, <laughs> The Phantom Menace is my second favorite. Uh, it might be because I watched it as a kid. I don't know, but we'll give you Jar Jar Binks out. You've got Darth Maul, Pod Racing. I mean, it's he was overstimulated by all the CG. There you go. Here. Darth Maul's phenomenal. The only problem, you know, what a waste of a character, though. I mean, yeah, that's what Maul I was going to say. You got such a great character. When you got and Liam Neeson in it, he can't beat that. I know, but he gets killed too. Yeah, well, Dark spoiler alert. Kills. Oh, yeah, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Yeah, spo yeah, spoilers. Spoilers for the young <laughs> we're drinking. We don't know what we're saying. <laughs> okay. I, I like The Empire Strikes Back, but I, my also my biggest um, or my favorite movie is uh, Return of the Jedi, which I know catches some slack for the first trilogy. It was probably the third best out of the three, but I like it the most. That's yeah, right. Followed you're... closely by Empire Strikes Back. Well, if anything. Fans got to realize that The Phantom Menace is definitely the best out of the second trilogy. The second episode two was pretty bad. Yes. But, yeah. That was the worst one. But speaking of, uh, I'm still drinking this uh, Johnny Walker and uh, the double black, and it's it's phenomenal. It's really good. Yeah, the double black's great. 
Well, I poured a little bit of the green label for Bart to go back to because he's thank you. Which is the it and the rye cast, right. they're really pretty I'm similar. They're both, rye. they're both both full of flavor, uh nice, you know, uh citrus sweetness with them as well. Yeah. It's yeah, but yeah, the uh, the rye cask surprisingly is is right there with I get a little their, sourdough bread rising on the nose of the green. Very nice. Hmm. That's good. I'm glad you did bring me back. I'm still digging that, that, that finish on the rye casking. Yeah, well, and, and keep in mind, it's a 10-year. It's got a 10-year age statement on it, and Love the it. green is 15-year. Yeah. Malt, 15-year yeah. blended malt, 10-year blended whiskey. Perfectly rye done. finish. Bringing us back to the whiskey as well. Well done. <laughs> good job. It was almost seamless. You even did it with a drink. You can't go wrong with like, oh, I've poured you another 15-year-old green. Thank you. Um, I do <laughs> want to point out, though, too, uh, Roy um, – Octave Vite does these blind challenges where he sends samples to other reviewers. Yes, genius. Um, recently, he'd sent samples to Keith, uh, the Malted Man Cave. Mm. That video should be posted to the Malted Man Cave's channel about the time we're done. Wow. Roy, do you know? Does he have it? Is he uploading? Is it ready to go? Um, anybody that's watching, if you want, go check out. Uh, the Malted Man Cave, he's doing Roy's next blind challenge, but he's nominating then his next person mm. uh, who he wants to receive the challenge. Also featured, Who I hear we have a vested interest in. I don't know who it is, but... What, what also featured in Teen Beat Magazine. Malted Man Cave was <laughs> featured in Teen, Teen Beat Magazine. Right, yeah, good-looking lad. <laughs> so, very trendy. Mm. I was actually able to get a bottle of the Johnny Walker um, director's cut 2049. So I, I had it in my hands at total wine for $75. Decided not to get it. Really? Put it back. About a month later, it's gone. <laughs> okay. What do I do now? You know, so I, I found it, but a little, a little steeper than it usually is, but uh, mm. I had to get it. So yeah, I've seen it online recently for like 120, 140. Really? That range. And then you have yeah. to pay for shipping and mm -hmm. it's wow. up, uh, yeah. under. 70. Now, just to steer us off track quickly, did you guys see Rogue One? Yes. Yes, that was actually very good. I yeah. liked it. A lot of people thought it, it was useless to do that movie, but yeah. I thought it answered a lot of questions, and um, I liked it a lot. I, I liked it better than uh, The Force Awakens. Me too. Sure. Me too. And I liked it that they went back to the 70s style Star Wars. Yeah. Yes. I think yeah. they could keep stepping that backwards. The two uh, Chinese guys, I want more. Well, and you you make Darth Vader seem like such a how about a Darth villain, Vader movie? You know, like it, oh. it's scary. You made him scary again. You know, it's brutal. Not, that was I yeah. was like, oh my god, look at that. Yeah, he wasn't just fighting like this. Who is it? Kylo Ren. He kind of just <laughs> oh yeah, he's all right until he takes his mask off. And sure, I just thought some of the character depth could have been uh, yeah. greater in Rogue One. Night. We didn't really know too much about them. It would have been nice to know their backstory a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. But I like that's it why I say keep yeah. keep stepping it backwards. If they put that yeah. on rewind and spoiler, took us back, spoiler further, alert! There, they kill everybody off. Oh, <laughs> they, well, except hopefully, a time to click click uh, pause. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys think of the CG uh, the CG faces though, with um, Leia and then um, what was General yeah. or Tarkin? Tarkin, Tarkin yes, yeah. Grand was, Moff Tarkin. Grand Moff Tarkin was horrible. Leia was okay. I thought they brought well, I mean, they for CGI. Tarkin, they I couldn't in. tell. Like I thought it was him until he started talking. I didn't like it. My boy leaned over. He's ten and goes, "Dad, what's wrong with that actor's face?" <laughs> <laughs> and I was well, like, "Man, why didn't they just go with like an old gunk guy?" Yeah, yeah. I, I'm looking forward to. I don't know if it's a trilogy, but uh, I think it's the next trilogy with the directors from Game of Thrones. Oh. They're gonna kind of put their their two cents on Star Wars, so that's kind of exciting to me. Really? What are they? I mean, I saw Solos coming out. I think Ron Howard's doing that, isn't he? Yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks good. Anytime you show me the Millennium Falcon brand new, I'm oh like, yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything with you buy the, on the trailer that I saw on that, I didn't care for the acting by the actor playing Solo. I didn't see enough from a trailer. Yeah, he's kind of a pretty boy, you know. Yeah, he didn't even seem like he was carrying the same swagger. Swagger, really, the same. Yeah, we'll yeah. yeah. Boba Fett would be great, but I don't yeah. see Boba Fett as he's like a man that doesn't talk. How do you do a show yeah. with him? 
Right, right. A silent film. Mm. Right. All right. Well, hey, let's. Uh, I think let's wrap it up. We've moved on well past the whiskeys at Johnny Walker range. I think we had a good conversation on all of those. Um, you got you guys. Uh, anybody that hasn't checked out Simple Diversion, go to their channel. You yeah. guys tell everybody where to find. Right. Uh, you guys on Twitter, Facebook. Instagram, all that we're, stuff. We're on. We're on uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, Simple Diversion. Um, you know, and we, uh, we're starting more, getting more into the social media. We haven't, we set it up and kind of backed away from it for a while and just focused on YouTube, but now we're really trying to get into it and, and kind of keep in touch with the community. So if you want to find us at Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, type in simple diversion and we'll try and, uh, follow you back and have a good time. Well, and show your, show your sweatshirts there. It's got your mm -hmm. logo on it. So oh, yeah. when they're looking, sure. they'll see you. We have uh see you soon. That's our that's our thing that we say, our model that we say at the end of the each episode, and uh, these sweatshirts hopefully will come out soon. Yeah. So, yeah. And thank you guys so much for having us on the show. Oh, thank it's, you. It's truly an honor just to you know share the stage yeah. with you, and it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, and, we were watching you guys before we had our channel, so this is yeah. definitely you know an honor. Pretty awesome. I know you guys were doing uh might maybe it's the only live stream that you did. You were sitting outside smoking a cigar. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I think I got a little notification. Well, so. <laughs> I tuned in there and I said something, and you guys were talking. You go, Scotch test dummies are watching. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> test Ed. Screw the rest of you. I know the rest of you. But. There you go. Test Ed. I love that right there. Anytime I hear that, Test Ed. <laughs> so, got, yeah, thank you. Very much. Around yelling that. Yeah, <laughs> thanks to you guys for joining us. Yeah, uh, thank you. Good luck. We'll, uh, you know, we'll we'll do what we can and and uh, have you on another show, or you have us on your show, and we'll smoke. Oh, a cigar. that would be I'll great. smoke a cigar. I may watch one be smoked. I smoked one with Scott years ago, first day at the new job. Well, not really, first day working with you. About did me in. Well, maybe you can have a glass of uh, scotch, and we'll we'll smoke with you. I will do that. We'll get yeah, We'll give our notes from the cigars. He can give his notes from the scotch. Right. Perfect. Perfect. Beautiful. Well. Um, I think that's it. Um, have we done everything? Scotch it. All right. All right. Scotch it, you Scotch gods. Cilantro. Dummies. <laughs> <laughs>